Hi, welcome to another part of my Backgammon Beyond Beginner tutorials. In this part I want to talk about opening moves. Uh, we've had a quick look at opening moves in my last series, Backgammon for Complete Beginners, but now I want to cover it in full detail. The opening position, of course, you're going to face in every game of Backgammon that you play, and half of the time you will be making the opening move, so you really want to know what to do in every eventuality in an opening. And it's not that hard to really master every move in an opening. There are only really 15 rolls of the dice that have any bearing here, if you think about it, because although there are 36 um, outcomes of two, rolling two dice, you can never start a game of backgammon with a double, and so six of those rolls are already taken care of, and the other 30 rolls are duplicated uh, because you have like 2 1 and 1 2 and etc. So there are 15 variations. Some of these moves, there's only really one choice to make with them. Any other choice would, be a, would just be a blunder and be pointless. Some of them have a few options, which we'll go into now when we go through them. Now, of course, the, back, the position in backgammon, this opening position, is well known. It's had probably the most study on it simply because, as I say, obviously, it's the one move every player faces. It's the same in other games. Chess openings are well documented. Um, things like the break in a game of snooker. Because it's the one point in the game that everyone will face where the pieces or the balls in such a case are in the same place. Incidentally, I, I know I keep making sort of... Uh, comparisons with other games when I'm talking about this, of which you may possibly no interest and the illusion might mean nothing, but um, I think it's fair to say that if you have an affinity for one type of game like this, one sort of mind sport or these games, you're likely to uh, have one with another. So, for example, I don't just play backgammon, I've also played competitive level Scrabble, I've played uh, Mahjong, and not the Mahjong that's the one with matching tiles, that god-awful solitaire variant, I'm, I mean the real one. I, and I played poker for money and used to play chess uh, on the school teams years and years ago. So I suspect possibly many of the viewers here will have played other sport, other uh, equivalent sports like this as well, so I'll continue to make the comparisons. So, yes, this position in backgammon is well known, well documented, so it's pretty easy to go through here every eventuality and discuss what is the correct thing to do. Now we'll start, there are five moves of the 15 potential outcomes that are pretty much um, the only one you will likely to choose. Of course you can move other pieces, but there are correct moves and these are generally correct, whatever. And we'll start going through them. We'll start with the absolute best. We're doing all these from Red's perspective, even though of course the, uh, the dice would be rolled by both players, but in this case we'll just use the red dice. Okay, so the absolute best roll you can start with in a game of backgammon, 3-1. This is a bit like having your pocket aces in Texas Hold'em poker. It's the best way you can start a game. There's only one really way to play it, and that is to bring your 3 in from here, and the 1 here, making your 5 point here. And this is the, this will put 5% on your winning chances in a, in a game of backgammon straight on, in your favour here, just by doing that. And the reason it's so important is you, you've got to understand the importance of this 5 point in backgammon. It's, it's the most important point on the board for your particular play. And the reason for this is several uh, fold. Firstly, of course, you're making a point in board, which is always useful, because you are getting um, a blocked point here for your enemy won't be able to re-enter on should he be hit. Also, you're starting a prime. Although it's only two spaces wide at this point, it, it is actually making part of a prime. Any future points you make will extend the prime. And of course here, if you make the bar point on a subsequent turn, you have a four prime straight away there. So it's useful for that way. Of course, it's also getting pieces into your home board, which you have to do before bearing off, obviously. So that's the third thing that's good, and it helps to unstack your heavy point here. Your, um, it's a good idea not to have too many checkers on one point at most points in backgammon, what we call candlesticks, and you want to try and avoid those. So 3-1, um, you definitely want to make your 5-point. 
Most of the early moves in an opening sequence in Backgammon aim to try and make this point here. So the fact that the 3-1 does it straight away is clearly the move to be made there. Okay. Right, the next move that we'll look at that is um, nearly as good as the 3-1, not quite, but nearly, is the 4-2. Again, there's not really much choice to be made here. It's a pretty obvious move. The 4 in from here and the 2 down from here. Again, it makes a point in your home board for all the right reasons that the 3-1 was good. Not quite as good as the 3-1, of course, because you have the gap here. It's not forming a prime at that point. But it's still the next best option, 4-2, almost as good. You're making a point again in your home board. All the same things that are good about the 3-1, apart from making the prime, apply here. So, nothing really to choose there. Right. And the other moves that you want to really make not much choice in, we can look at the 6-1. Now we've seen this before in the, my last series, and this is a pretty easy one to decide. You move the 6 down from here and make the bar point with the 1 here. This gives you an instant 3 prime along here, makes it more difficult for black to extract his checkers because he'll now need two rolls to get them out here rather than just being able to roll here with the six. So it, it's a pretty straightforward move, not much other choices with a six one. You always come down, make the bar point there. Uh, then another move which is um, pretty much standard, again we've probably seen it before, the six five. Uh, in this case you want to take a checker from the back here and move it all the way, 6 and 5, to the midpoint here. And it's one of the few moves in backgammon, it may even be the only one, it's the only one I can think of off the top of my head, that actually has a name. They call this Lover's Leap. Um, it's a useful move, it gets a, a checker half the way home, still keeping it safe, of course, in one move. Um, so then all you've got to do is extricate the last checker. Usually when you play this as an opening move, in subsequent moves you prime objective in the openings is then to try and get this one free. You've already got the head start here so you want to start getting that one round quick. 6-5 then. Pretty standard straightforward stuff. Other one in the opening that is pretty much a dead cert no matter what the uh, match circumstances is the 5-3 and again you would move the 5 in uh, here and the 3 from here making another point in board. Now this is um, more of a recent discovery in backgammon, I say recent, I'm talking about compared with moves that were played back in the 70s. I mean, people thought that putting the checkers this deep into the board was the wrong thing to do with a 5-3. Um, this is, tends to be correct in a lot of situations that you don't want to what's called bury checkers. If you put checkers too deep it limits the options of what you can do with them because they can only move forward of course and there's less space for them to move between, and so you're, you're sort of killing the checkers. And it was thought back then that this was too deep early on in the game. But computer analysis has shown that even, even this far in, it is still the correct move to play with the 5-3 under any match score. So always, with the 5-3 opening, play it in that way. Alright, so they're the five moves that are not much discussion needs to be made. They are the ones you will make. Just learn them by rote and play them because they are the right moves. Varying them will not really serve you if you play them in any other way than that, no matter what the situation in the match. Always play the openings that way, I would, I would recommend. 